slightly quickly. When you do find that story and you go for it, how do you then get in contact with those super important people like that drug dealer? I mean, how do you get in contact with someone like that? How do you make that? I've always wondered that. You just have to really love hashish, basically. <laughs> no, I mean, it's local journalists, basically. I mean, okay. I actually, I actually think making international documentaries is slightly easier than making documentaries mm. in your hometown. Yeah, yeah, because when you make an international documentary, you, you kind of have like a a seasoned list of fixes and like internet like and local journalists who already have a knowledge of the area. So th what you do to start off, you want to find out about an issue that you think is interesting, and then you'll just ring a fixer and have a conversation with them, pay them for a couple of days of work, everything, and they will work with you on an idea. And then and like with that one, I was like. I was just interested in hashish in Lebanon because Lebanese had like, Lebanon had like red Lebanese or whatever. It was like a big, and it was like one of the biggest. It had like a lot of hashish, and I thought that was quite interesting. Um, and I was going to Lebanon for a month, so I thought that would be interesting. And, and then I just rang a local journalist and asked her about it, and I said, "Do you know any hashish huge drug lords?" And she just happened to know a guy. <laughs> that is literally. Yeah, well, if you think about it, if you're a, a journalist in Lebanon, you know. 50% of journalists in Lebanon should have a contact like that, yeah, roughly. Story, yeah, um, so. You know, you, you come from, from Liverpool, then you, you, there's a certain type of person who you'll know. You, just, you, you went to school with what them, you, you, know, yeah, you know. But you might, not be, you might not consider them to be you know, yeah. part of your social circle. But, you know, as journalists, that's what you do, is you pull out these people. Um, totally uninteresting for me. I had this with a, a Greek team got in touch. Um, they wanted to make a documentary after the riots, and they wanted to link... Um, it's, this, it's very Greek. It was very Greek. They wanted to link the whole EU um, austerity thing with the London riots and and um, and the kids that were kind of like raiding JD Sports. And I was like, yeah, there might be, uh, there probably is a link, like <laughs> at, at a level. And I can get you someone from Socialist Worker who can do that. But they were desperate for me to get in these kids from the streets and stuff. And so again, it was one of these like. Yeah, I guess I know some kid who sells weed on the streets. Yeah. <laughs> I can introduce you, and suddenly it's like you've introduced him to like a gang member from Hackney. Yeah, like, I, guess, <laughs> I suppose he's in a gang. <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly what it's like for our local fixer, who who will be like, yeah, I, I guess yeah, he is quite a big deal in that industry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, you know, it, they would have come across him through some other random connection, some other way. But also, like, you know, secondary from that is like. I know a big part of the business is figuring out why people want to be in a film. So it's like, you know, you, and like that's how you, because a big part of it is trying to persuade people who are difficult to, mm. like, to be in films, to be in a film. And it's like trying to figure out, because you can't pay people like 99% of the time. You can give them like disturbance fees for their time. You can't pay someone for an interview. Like in the UK and America, you can do whatever you want. But um, so it's a case of like trying to figure out what they want and why they, and the Lebanese guy wanted to be in it because he thought he was like, some Robin Hood type figure who was like literally thought he you know robbing from the rich to give to the poor and he was kind of loved in the local community and he just thought it would be like a really good opportunity to just present himself as this guy and like so it's all about trying to figure out like mm. why people want to be in it. Those people are, I find really interesting like the, the bad guys are actually really good people to talk to because inevitably nobody asks their opinion. They just mm. kind of get painted with a yeah. certain, certain brush and they are desperate to portray a, a, a different side of themselves. And inevitably everyone's complex and has different sides, you know, different reasons why he got into it and things that he does with his money and so on and so forth. So they're always really good people because mm. they, they, they always sort of stop and go, actually, I can make this work for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you're sort of there going, all right, mate, yeah, <laughs> take yourself that. But, you know... Um, yeah, I find those people really interesting, much more so than, you know, no offence to them, but, you know, your NGO worker who does fantastic work, but really can't talk to you on a personal level about anything, doesn't want to show light and grey, you know, shades of grey and, and, you know, the, the, the awkward side of real life, um, wants to show the great work that their, or, or that their charity has done, and that's it. Um, you're not going to get much there, or nothing that's going to interest you and therefore your audience. I think 